Welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast. I'm Greg Burke, and now in my 24th year as Director of Athletics at Northwestern State University, creating an environment in which student athletes and young professionals can develop skill sets to make them successful in any walk of life is invaluable. Mentors can provide an extra measure of confidence by helping them grow, by seeking their input, and by listening to their ideas. This and much more can be found in Will Baggett and Ty Brown's book, The Blueprint for a Successful Career, a foundation for developing young professionals. Find it on Amazon. Greetings, this is Ty Brown and welcome to the One Question Leadership Podcast, where we highlight executive and organizational leadership. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at 1Q Leadership. Our guest today is Mark Allnut. Mark is the Director of Athletics at University at Buffalo. Greetings, Mark. Thanks for joining us. Hey, thanks, Ty. Appreciate you having me on. You're in year two there at Buffalo as a Director of Athletics. Of course, you spent time as Director of Athletics at Southeast Missouri State. Overall, in terms of college administration, it's been about 13 years. But prior to that, worked in football operations at Missouri before Mike Alden pulled you over into administration, which is somebody great to work for. That was in 2006. And of course, the time you spent down at Memphis with Tom Bowen. So you have a wealth of experience in college administration, experience in leadership, and experience working with the elephants of the profession. So I, I wanted to have you on to ask a couple questions about uh, just the, some of the things you deal with as an athletic director. First question I'll ask is, looking back at a year and a half in the chair there at University at Buffalo, what are some of the busy, biggest aspects of being the AD there specifically that you've learned over this last, I guess, year and a half since you've been in the chair? Well, well, first and foremost, you have to understand the the culture uh, of the place, and 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 culture is is obviously a, it can be um, you know said in a multifaceted way. You know, from a from a department standpoint, from a campus standpoint, also um, community. You know, in, in doing the research, you know, for this position and understanding the leadership, the outstanding leadership, you know, prior to, to me setting foot on campus, when you, you know, hear the names uh, such as Ward Manuel, Danny White, you know, Alan Green, and and you, you saw the trajectory, so to speak, in terms of where this department was going, you know, understanding all that, you still have to dig in deep in terms of, you know, who, who's in the department with you and, you know, what are what are the strengths that are, that are there, what are you know, obviously, um, the, the weaknesses and, and what do we need to improve on and, and what are some opportunities there. So, you know, the initial step that I did with uh, my staff was to, uh, you know, do the SWOT analysis. And, and part of that assignment that I had them complete prior to me being on campus was, you know, have a view of the department from, from their specific area. Uh, the strengths, the weaknesses, opportunities, and the threats, but but also more importantly, I wanted to get to know the person. And and part of the one-on-one -on -one meetings that I had, which you know, I was fortunate to to sit down with every one of our our full-time staff members, which is over 120 people over a three-month period, was the goal that I that I set for myself was to, you know understand where they're coming from um, and, and how they see the department and obviously how they um, they fit into the department and, and ways that we can improve, you know, what we're doing. But, but also more importantly is trying to get to know the person. So as part of that SWOT analysis, um, separate of that SWOT analysis with that assignment was, you know, I wanted to know them. Um, you know, tell me about your family. You know, tell me about your alma mater. You know, do you have a nickname? You know, hobbies. Uh, what are your career um, aspirations and, and goals, and, and how can I help, you know, achieve something like that? So being able to sit down with, you know, those people, uh, whether they came to my office or I went to uh, their area to, to have what initially I planned to be a 30-minute conversation, which um, after several times of going, going over, I worked with my admin, administrative assistant to uh, make it an hour long because it was, it was a very good discussion. And, and you learn, you know, so much, you know, from those conversations. You know, you, you hear, you know, a lot of, of folks coming in saying, hey, this is the first time I've been in the AD office or this is the first time that, that the AD is, has, has come to, to my office. Uh, you try to pinpoint and, and, and listen to some consistencies that you hear when, when dealing with the staff and, and that helps you plan and, and you know what we feel would be obviously um, you know some short term and, and long term goals for us as a as a department which was which which proved beneficial. Right. Yeah it's important, right? So so a lot of this first year and I hear this a lot from my athletic directors, but it's it's really tuning in to the people 
and tuning into uh, relationships and partnerships across campus that can prove beneficial for all parties. I, I wonder, Mark, people who have been there 10 to 12 years, probably in the athletics department, have been through a number of, of different leaders. You mentioned Ward Manuel, uh, Danny White, Alan Green, and now you're there in the chair. Um, when you sit down with someone who's been there for a while and has been through a number of different leaders and all great leaders, what is tell me about that conversation, right? Because they've kind of grown accustomed to learning new leaders and learning how to communicate with someone new who will be making final decisions and probably have influence within the department. Tell me about conversations with those types. Well, you know, I, I can't initiate a conversation by saying "trust me." You know, I have to. <laughs> right, exactly. I have to. I have to earn their earn their trust, and and how you earn that trust is, you know, it's uh, it's action speak more than words. And you know, for me, you're 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 meeting with these folks as you mentioned that you know for them this is their their fourth or fifth uh, athletic director, and and in their mind they're thinking, okay, well, you know what, Mark Allnut, you know, he, he's here. I guess I'll get to know him, but uh, who knows? you know who yeah, right. if he's going to be athletic director you know three or four years down the road so mm -hmm. you know you know i i approach it as you know we're all different in terms of uh you know how we lead a department so for for me i think the main aspect of that is you know for them to see that you know i want to empower you know folks throughout our department to make our department better that i i do have that ear in terms of you know, suggestions, recommendations, um, you know, they could be particular experts in their, in their area. You know, I'm, I'm going to lean, I'm going to lean on them. But also at the end of the day, you know, what those people want to see more than anything is, is progress and how the department continues to evolve, how that this department continue, continues to bring great exposure um, to, to our university and, and how they can be a, a part of that, which, you know, you, you'll have those conversations as every, every AD might have where, you know what, this is how we always done it here, or this is this is that, or you know what, you're gonna get you you're not gonna get support from from campus, and it just goes back to, you know, that's when you know my actions, you know, obviously speaks volumes to them when they when they see how sincere I am about you know what, my primary focus is continue to elevate this 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 department, which uh, you know we have done and which we'll continue to to do, and the the main thing, and I, I believe this. Um, you know, from uh, the the extent of my heart is is you have to build a relationship. I mean, it can't just be transactional with um, with with your employees. You know, there has to be a sincere interest in terms of the job that they do, but also to in terms of you know uh, what's outside of office hours in terms of you know their, their family, as I mentioned before, their their hobbies. You know, having a sincere interest in the person and not just the position, you know, helps really uh, build that buy-in. And, and when you have that that buy-in that's that's built, and you have the opportunity to empower your folks to do great things, overall morale, you know, of the, of the department raises. Right. The people you've worked for in terms of leadership, Mike Alden, Tom Bowen, they, these are elephants in the profession. And of course, you spent time as an AD at Southeast Missouri State. I, one thing that, from the outside looking in, that Tom Bowen and Mike Alden were and are very good at is evaluating leadership talent right because people go off to become athletics directors I, I wonder is that something that you when you work for somebody you kind of glean some of the skills they have i wonder if that's something that you you took with you to southeast missouri state now at buffalo in terms of identifying people who are leaders and slowly but surely putting them on the path to potential leadership positions no for sure i mean you know, again it, it comes back from the mentors that you have and the, and the names that you've mentioned but it begins with uh with mike alden who I had the opportunity to work with and, and you talk about person exemplified servant leadership and he had the ability to um you know put us in situations that we might not have been comfortable with but at the end of the day we, we learned so much more from it and he he gave us, you know, the opportunity for that professional development, whether, and again, not just going to the NACTAs and the lead ones, uh, the cows of the world, but, you know, having that opportunity when, you know, a visiting AD, you know, came to campus or, you know, we were on a road trip somewhere, you know, to be able to open those doors and be able to begin those relationships with whether it might be the visiting AD or maybe, um, you know, someone that's a peer of mine in, in terms of the, the role that I might have been in. So, you know, to be able to build that network and be able to um, 
to to develop you from a professional standpoint in terms of you know sharpening your skill set was was very important. So that's something that I took with me uh, when I was at Southeast Missouri State. I mean, the current AD uh, there is a gentleman by the name of Brady Barkey who was um, um, you know essentially my uh, my number two person when I was in the department uh, there early on, and and you know being able to you know see you know obviously you know he had that skill set and and the opportunity to to become that AD which he is, and and being able to identify that early on, or or someone like Rachel Blunt, who is now the SWA at uh, Central Michigan, she was uh, our um, assistant AD for compliance at, at Southeast Missouri State that you know has elevated herself to that leadership role at Central Michigan. And even when you go into to Memphis, being able to to work with folks or, or with coaches that you know be able to give them opportunities. So even here at at, at Buffalo, um, you know we have some great people here, and and I'm always the one that you know I want to make sure that you know regardless of how you cut a budget, that we also need to invest in people. And again, it's not just to invest in people, you know, for them to leave, you know, Buffalo. You know, ultimately, yes, if that that occurs, that's great. But I also want to invest in people so when they leave Buffalo, they, they've also elevated you know, us as a as a unit, us as a department. And they're able to, you know, put so much into Buffalo that now they're they're able to um to, you know, make that next step, you know, from a professional standpoint. And that and that makes me <laughs> you know, obviously overly happy. Um, you know, as A D when we see people advance and, and be able to attain their, their professional goals. Right. So what I've learned um, either from my experience or from experience talking to people through this podcast or through videos or just people that I've known and relationships I have is that usually, you know, throughout your career, you usually feel more comfortable doing certain things. And when you get to a leadership role, you kind of veer towards that. If something comes up, that's kind of your first thought is the thing that I am most comfortable with. Is there a thing for you that you've done throughout your career? I know you came up in football operations and video operations, but moved into administration. Is there something you feel the most comfortable doing at Buffalo? It's relationships. I mean, that, that's that's the thing that yeah, that's the thing I feel most most comfortable with is is, is going out and and building those relationships. Whether it is as we talked about before, within your internally within your staff or on campus, or, or more importantly, you know, out in the community. Because you know, again, obviously from a philanthropic standpoint, we know we need the the you know all the help. That 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 we can get. So, you know, I'm I'm very comfortable when it comes out when when, when it comes to going out and being able to share the vision, you know, that we have here at um, at University at, at Buffalo in terms of, you know, what our what our needs are, or even if it's not from a from a donor standpoint, you know, going out to to various community leaders and and, and folks, you know, that are out there, um, you know, in our in our in our area and and be able to you know share with them. You know what what athletics brings not just to university but to this to this community and i'm always I'm always the one to Ty, that you know when it comes to to basketball games and and, and football games um you know I, I want to visit with everybody you know not just hang out in the the premium seating area or you know stay stay in my suite or, or whatever the case might be but I mean you'll see me at a at a football game and a basketball game you know going up and down the the aisle so to speak and you know first and foremost just just thanking people because I, I want to be accessible and you know at times you know in, in our role um, when you're accessible and and depending on what's happening the season uh, yeah you're going to get an earful but you know to to be honest with you you know I, I appreciate folks that have have passion rather than rather than apathy and also I feel that when you're when you're more visible to you know the folks that support you you know again it's like as I mentioned very early on in this uh, in this interview you know you, you build that trust and and people see the action that you're sincere in what you're doing and you, and you build the trust with all your constituency groups from your student athletes your staff and coaches the folks on campus and then obviously folks out in the community and, and your alums I'll ask this last question and then we'll wrap the good leader looks for problems to solve and sometimes sees those as challenges that they look forward to are there any upcoming leadership challenges that you look forward to in the short term and and the long term? I guess there at Buffalo. Well, I think it's it's. it's... <laughs> You know, the answer to this question might be in unison with um, any AD that you ask. You know, obviously with the name, image, and likeness, and and being able to to figure out, you know, how um, you know we're going to be able to handle that moving forward, and and how we're going to be able to handle it in a way that's uh, you know consistent and equitable um, and fair. Um, you know, at the same time, you know, fighting the uh, the the public opinion 
that's out there, which, you know, obviously the, the name image likeness issues that we're going to be addressing is different from, you know, uh, pay for play, which um, every day seems to be from a, from a public sentiment uh, standpoint, uh, seems to be growing, you know, based on, you know, how we operate as, um, you know, as a, as a membership with, uh, you know, coaches buyouts and, and high profile uh, student athletes that, um, you know, might be performing at, at such a high level or maybe, uh, you know, a, a high-profile student athlete that, that possibly suffers a career-ending uh, injury. So, you know, I, I, I've always had the, the, the firm belief that, you know, I, I definitely want to maximize what we can do for our, for our student athletes, but, but do it in a way that, that makes sense. And, and we'll be engaged with, you know, plenty of conversations here in the, in the future with obviously, you know, my peers, folks in the conference offices and, you know, coaches and, and, and student athletes to try to figure this out because the, the worst thing that we can do is, you know, have 50 different states, you know, having 50 different um, you know, laws in terms of in terms of how to address this. So, you know, that's that's the focus, you know, right now that, uh, you know, we're all thinking about and we're all, you know, scribbling down notes and, <laughs> yeah. and trying to see what, what you know, what, what makes sense. Uh, you know, that's the thing about this uh, – this profession is, you know, the fact that, you know, people just see see you on Saturdays or see you, you know, on the the, the Friday night basketball games or, or what have you. But, you know what, you always have to be very proactive in, in your thinking and in terms of having the ability to forecast, you know, what this is going to look like and, you know, three, four, five years down the road, which, you know, I wish I had the answer what, it, what it's going to look like. But, you know what, it's better now to be planning and thinking about, you know, obviously an opportunity like this that lays out in front of us, you know, rather than being reactive. Right. It's a it's a big bullet point in a long list of bullet points. That you <laughs> exactly that right. Issue. Exactly right. Well, Mark, this, this has been an excellent conversation. I really appreciate you joining us here on One Question. Hey, Ty, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. That was Mark Allnut. He's the director of athletics at University at Buffalo. And of course, this is Ty Brown with One Question. And keep in mind, the role of a leader is to create and maintain an environment that people want to be a part of. And as always, be better tomorrow than you are today. This episode of the One Question Leadership Podcast is produced by Spades Media Group, solving problems using creative leadership.